on worms. In today's video, I'm going to teach you how to recognize, locate, capture, and control hornworms in your garden, all without the use of pesticides. So first off, how do I recognize hornworms in my garden? There's two varieties that are commonly found on your plants. The first one that I'll talk about is the tomato hornworm, which turns into the five-spotted hawk moth. The tomato hornworm is recognized by the eight V's with no black outline. A black or blue horn, you can consider those eight V's to stand for V8, tomato juice, if that helps you to recognize them a little easier. The other variety is the tobacco hornworm, which turns into the Carolina sphinx moth. On their body, they have seven black stripes. Think of Lucky Strike cigarettes. And they have a red horn. Now, both of these hornworms, although named for the common plants that they are found on, can actually interchange on any of those. The hornworms like to eat tomato, eggplant, peppers, tobacco, and potatoes, which are commonly found in your gardens. Up north, normally you would find more of the tomato hornworm, and down south, more of the tobacco hornworm. But as you can see in these photos, I commonly found more tobacco hornworms on my plants. The hornworms start out relatively small, but they grow quickly. They decimate a lot of the foliage, and it does look like it has been eaten by caterpillars when all of the young leaves have been chewed off completely. These caterpillars get rather sizable when they are getting close to uh, going into their cocoons. So they are easy to spot when they are much larger. Hornworms are really good at camouflage. So then how do you locate them on your plants? First, most gardeners will notice that their plants have been decimated from seeing a lot of the young leaves be chewed off and only the stalk remaining. Hornworms like to go after the young leaves, and they will go out to feed in the early morning or in the early evening when there are less predators about. In the middle of the day, they will hide in the plant and are more difficult to find. To locate them, you'll want to go out early in the morning. is generally the best time to find them. You can also look for their droppings. Droppings fall down onto the leaves below and give you an indication of where the hornworm may be located on your plant. So now that you've recognized and located hornworms in your garden, how do you go about capturing them? Since the hornworm likes to hide in the middle of the day, if you are going to set out to grab them, you'd want to do that in the morning or in the early evening and you go out with a cup and simply pluck them off of the plant. If you don't want to handle them directly, you can always snip off the leaves that they are on and remove them from your plant. You can then put them into mulch or you can feed them to your chickens or ducks. If you have hornworms that are feeding on tobacco, you would want to just mulch them as they ingest a lot of the toxic nicotine and can therefore harm animals. And even with the tomato feeding, that can be harmful for small animals. A great method that I have discovered to track down hornworms is to go out at night with a UV light. I had found out that hornworms, once they become adults, are often trapped using UV lights. I went out with a UV light 
and found that the caterpillars themselves light up very brightly amongst the leaves that they're hiding in. It's then very easily to go out and to pluck them off of the plants and even the small ones that are very easy to hide. Once you capture all of these hornworms and using these methods, we get to the next topic. How do you control hornworms in your garden? How do you keep them from destroying your plants completely? And how can you coexist with them in a way that still maintains concepts of permaculture in your garden? Hornworms do have a natural enemy. There is a parasitic wasp, and it is very, very small. It goes through and it finds the caterpillars also using the UV light. It locates the caterpillars and lays its eggs inside of them. And as the larvae mature, they control the caterpillar and then they emerge into cocoons on the caterpillar's back. The caterpillar stays alive, but it becomes excessively lethargic and will hang out. It is a little grisly in many ways. However, if you do see a hornworm that has these cocoons on its back, leave it alone. The parasitic wasps will emerge from the back of that hornworm and will go through your garden and they will lay eggs in any other hornworms that are remaining in your garden. That is one very easy way to control them naturally, to let nature take its course. Another option that you can do, because the hornworm is so sizable, and the, the moths that emerge from this caterpillar are very good pollinators. Another method would be to take them aside, either put them on a sacrificial plant that is not doing well. You can have it as a teaching lesson for your kids. You can put it in a container with some of the snippings of the tomato plants or whatever other vegetation you're growing. And they can observe the caterpillars grow and grow into these moths. That is a method of controlling them. And once you curb their numbers in great amounts, you will not have a huge issue with them decimating your crops. I hope this has been informative for you to understand exactly what hornworms are and what they do and how to control them relatively easily, again, without using pesticides. Thank you so much for watching this video. I appreciate any likes and subscriptions to my channel as I release more videos. Thank you.